Okay, welcome to Module 3. We get to talk about something that I know you've been dying to talk about since we began. We're going to talk about money. Let's talk about money. Now, lesson one is currency versus money. So we can talk about some of the common misconceptions of money. All right, let's talk about currency and money. Now, there's a big difference here. Here's one of the greatest societal misunderstandings that we have. Now, I know a lot of people don't want to read a lot about certain economics and, and, and books of that nature, but without a little bit of study and without a little bit of homework and research, you really can get lost in what people like to tell you is money. Okay, Money has been the greatest societal misunderstanding we, we have. The concept of money. Here's what money truly is. Money is value. Money means value. So, a horse back in the days, a pig, a cow, gold, silver, land, all these things had value, and they were considered money. So, I don't know, you know, in the olden days, it would be, hey, uh, you know, uh, four pigs equals one horse, you know, five cows equals a pig. I don't know how they set it up, but it was all a sense of value and they would exchange, and that was how currency started. But money was the actual value, okay? Now, currency is simply paper. Currency is what we call fiat. It is created by the Fed, the Fed what we like to re refer to as the Federal Reserve. It's a promise to pay. It's an IOU. Every single paper dollar bill in your pocket, no matter what the denomination of the bill is, is an IOU. It's built on the promise and the good faith of the United States government. It's currency. It has no true intrinsic value. It is valueless. It is simply paper. It's currency. So let's discuss what money is and what money does and what currency is all about. Well, here's the situation. Money is all about purchasing power. It's all fixed. So today, you can go to the grocery store and a quart of milk costs you $3. So you know, and, I, and don't hold me to that because I'm not sure, I don't go shopping, my wife does all of that. So I'm guessing on a quart of milk, it could be three, four dollars, whatever it is, right? That's a fixed value, that's what milk is today. So you go down, you lay down some currency and you pick up the milk, okay? But the purchasing power was the money. It was the purchasing power of the paper. Okay, in 1971, President Nixon took us off the gold standard. So what he did was he wiped out any value standard. In the past, you could only print as much money as you had gold to back it up. Now, the Federal Reserve can basically print as much money as they like to print for whatever reason they want to print it. That means that the more money flows in, it creates inflation. Okay, so when we wiped out that value standard, we opened the door to fiat. And right now, we keep printing paper that has no value, all right? And as I said, that creates inflation for you. So that's simply what inflation is. It's printing at the will of the government. So the more money that enters into the economy, the more money that flows through, the less purchasing value you have with that paper money. But remember, again, the money is truly the purchasing power value. This is why having gold or silver or having other things as we talked about, other types of assets are about purchasing power for the future because they hold their purchasing power, because they're true money. Currency never holds its purchasing power. So inflation affects currency. Inflation doesn't really affect money. And this is kind of a misunderstood concept where people get themselves lost in the difference between money and currency. So I want you to understand that as prices increase and wages reduce, those kinds of things happen this is what causes a mass cycle of inflation, and this is what causes people to lose wealth, and this is how people end up financially dependent, once again. Now, this is a major key to know the difference between currency and the misdefinition of money. Okay, again, it steps back to our education. When we're little, when we grow through school, they don't talk to us too much about money, but when they do talk to us about money at all, it's about money. They don't tell us the difference between currency and money. And usually, you, you learned about money, chances are 
99.9% of our entire society learns about money from one, one social setting. You learned about money from your mom and dad. That's what we all did. Because the education system didn't teach us about money. So, currency and money, two massively different concepts. And we need to understand, you want to be in the 5%, those are people who understand the difference between currency and money. They understand how to get beyond the status quo. Financial freedom is a value-based scenario. And independence and freedom are not totally the same thing. Financial freedom is one thing. Financial independence is totally different. Just because you're free financially doesn't make you totally independent. You can be tied to certain sources of income. You can be tied to certain things that you have no control over. You can be tied to your investments. That's not total financial independence. Financial independence means that you don't have to be concerned or worried about where your money is, where your money's going, and what's going to happen with your money. Because wealth is not currency. Wealth is actual value. Wealth is not a number on a piece of paper. It's actual value. And if you build your assets right and you control your balance sheet and do the right things, you become financially independent, not financially free. And there we have it, right there. If you read that little box, it tells you very closely that basically this is a form of an IOU. This is based on the good faith and well-being of the United States government. And don't get me wrong, we are the richest nation in the world. We are the ones who can back all these assets, and that's wonderful. That's dandy. But this is not money. And the Federal Reserve, if you notice in the top corner, is a private corporation. You're misled quite a bit to believe that the Federal Reserve is part of the government. They're not. They're a private corporation. And as such, they are legally allowed to counterfeit. We can't do it. I wish I could put a printing press in my basement and print money at my own will. But I can't do it. I'll go to jail. 20, 30, 40 years. You can't do it. You're going to go to jail. However, the government can do it through the guise of the Federal Reserve. They can print currency at will. We're going to get more into that. But I want you to walk away from this lesson with one key element in thought. Know the difference between currency and know the difference between money. Once you do that, you're on the pathway to financial independence. I'll see you in the next lesson.